A calorie is not a calorie. In this video, I'm gonna share what's really going on behind the scenes. As rates of obesity skyrocket, we are being fed a lie. It's all about calories, just eat less and run more and you'll be okay. But it doesn't work like that. A 400 calorie donut and 400 calories of salmon have wildly different effects on your body and satiety and your future food intake. Repeatedly eating a 400 calorie donut drives obesity, drives poor metabolic health, while 400 calories of salmon protects against it. So when you eat, a calorie is not a calorie. In your body, their effects are different. Some foods, some calories satisfy more than others. Our food environment has changed in profound ways recently, and the result is clear. An epidemic of poor metabolic health, like obesity, high blood sugar, high blood pressure, and more. Poor metabolic health is rampant. It drives all our top chronic diseases and poor quality of life. In the adult US population, 93% are unhealthy. So, what exactly is driving this? What is it about our food environment that has changed? Some believe it's all about the carbs, and they certainly matter. But maybe it's not all about carbs, and while low carb can work well, maybe they're not the only factor. One large study tested a low carb diet versus a high carb diet for 600 people. Both groups lost lots of weight with no clear difference. The two groups were equally successful. So how can people get equally good results by seemingly taking the opposite approach? Some believe it's all about eating real foods or whole foods, because repeated studies show a strong connection between ultra-processed foods, overeating, and metabolic disease. But it is unclear exactly how to define what foods are ultra-processed. Not all of them appear problematic, and not all minimally processed foods are necessarily helpful. If anything, ultra-processing is a marker, a red flag, that something could be wrong. The food industry processes foods to make them more profitable. Often this makes the food less nutritious and more addictive. This is good for industry profits, but it's bad for people's health. Yet again, there seems to be lots of exceptions and the truth appears to be more complex. So, should you go low carb or low fat? Vegan or carnivore, seemingly opposite approaches all achieve good results, at least for some people. All diets appear to work. And it may be that the standard processed diet that people eat today is the worst one ever created, as it's optimized for profit, with the resulting overeating necessary to maximize sales. And if the standard American diet is the worst ever, any change would be for the better. Therefore, all diets work. It's like if you were in a burning house, it doesn't matter how you get out. Use any door, any window, get away from the modern processed diet any way you can. Still, what exactly is the problem with the current food environment? There appears to be many components. For example, it's less nutritious with less protein and less micronutrients. It is highly energy dense, meaning you will quickly eat many more calories in a shorter time. It is low on fiber and it's engineered to be highly rewarding, ideally even addictive. All this complexity makes it very difficult to figure out how to compare different foods. You almost need to study nutrition to even get started. And then you need to analyze everything you eat in detail. I mean, no wonder people just give up. What if it could be made much, much simpler? It is possible to take all this complexity and make it simple. We can identify what foods are more or less satiating, which has lower or higher 
satiety per calorie. We can build tools to guide people in simple, delightful ways to more satiating foods that they will love. We're working on this and let me explain how this works. Satiety is the opposite of hunger. And if you want to eat less, to lose excess weight and improve your health, then satiety can be the solution. We can't fight ourselves forever, so just restricting calories doesn't work long term. We'll eventually get too hungry, too strong cravings and give up. If you instead leverage satiety, now you can eat as much or as little as you want. The trick is to find the foods that gives you the feeling of satiety despite eating less. But all this complexity, all these various factors, makes it hard to identify what foods are most or least satiating. So now let's make it simple. What if we can take all these factors and just make them one? With this as a starting point, we can build truly helpful tools. So that's what we've done. And here are the four factors we've built together. Protein percentage, fiber, energy density, and the hedonic factor. After consulting with several world-class experts and scientists, these appear to be the most important factors that we know about today. But again, this complexity is way too much math to run in your head every time you eat. Fortunately, you don't need to. We've created and refined an algorithm that weighs the different factors together and gives you a number instantly. So let's look at this satiety scale. The factors influencing satiety all come together in one score that goes from zero, very low satiety, to 100, very high. And our algorithm predicts where common foods land on this scale. At the bottom, at satiety zero, you'll find some of the world's least satiating foods. These are the foods that we predict are most likely to lead to weight gain and long-term to obesity and metabolic disease. But at the right end of the range are the foods we predict will make people want to eat the least. For example, green leafy vegetables and lean proteins. In the middle, around the 50 mark, we place foods with balanced satiety. And more about this later. There are three more key concepts. First, everyone's of course gonna eat a mix of higher or lower satiety foods. What we predict matters most is the average score over a day, week or year. Secondly, we predict that eating very low satiety on average, like 20, may result in obesity and metabolic disease. On the other hand, eating an average of 50 or a bit higher may result in a lean, strong physique and solid metabolic health. There are plenty of reasons to believe this. A more concrete example is that the standard American diet ends up in the high 20s. And since it's resulted in an obesity epidemic... Americans are not winning their battle against obesity. We're losing the battle against obesity. Experts say this is an alarming trend. That checks out. Another concrete example is that most people who achieve a strong lean physique seem to end up in the 60s. Finally, the goal is not to stay at 100 on average. That's way too high, too effective. You'll likely become too lean compared to what your body prefers, resulting in eventually, after days or weeks, getting tired, miserable, and depressed. You cannot live on just protein and fiber. You can't live on spinach and egg whites alone. The goal is to find your balance, which for most people may be a bit higher than we started, at least if you wanna get leaner and more metabolically healthy. What is revolutionary with our approach is that it can explain why all diets work, why seemingly opposite approaches all can work. This approach can help us eat more of the foods we love while getting more of the results we want. If you prefer a specific diet, these satiety tools can help you become more successful with it. So more foods you love and more effectiveness at the same time. That could be a revolution. And I invite you to try it out with us and help us improve on it together. On our website, hava.co, you can find tools to help you check 
the satiety of various foods, whatever it is that you're interested in, whatever it is that you are currently eating. We're also building an app to make it truly simple and delightful to use this approach, to check where you are on the scale and what you can do to move to your balanced place. This also leverages some game-changing new AI functionality. Go to hava.co to check it out. See you in the next video. Until then, eat well.